How are we doing? Let's do it. Let's do it. I think this, Sadia, whatever you tell me, I don't know. I will really be glad to learn. I actually got so excited because I found more interesting stuff. Like, um, I know I did uh, study Malala a lot in my master's project, but I was seeing people, uh, like the media coverage and how it's been you know, like being portrayed in Pakistan. And then I found such interesting facts about Malala. Like, why she got shot, why Taliban picked Malala just Malala out of all those girls who were going to school in that area. And that is because of her extensive activism. She was all around national media and international media like for years at that time. So I have gathered her very rare videos of interviews with the local channels in Voice of America. Uh, that's why I was like, I need those back. No, I don't want to tell them words. I want to show them. So that's why I was like a little overwhelmed. So I think I'm not gonna waste more time. I'm gonna like talk like a rocket with very <laughs> a lot of speed, so I get a lot of chance chance to cover more stuff. Well, if you can, if the presentation is gone, why don't you tell us about who she was and what happened and why it matters? And that will be a big education for us, especially Sadia. Farouk is from Pakistan, and she knows a lot about Malala because she has written her master's thesis on Malala. And I think that we are very fortunate that she could give us some insights. So do you want to do that, Sadia? Yes, yes, I have made a, a immediate quick PowerPoint too. Oh, good. Okay. good. That's what I was working on right now. <laughs> Look at that, how quickly you can recover. That's wonderful. We will love it. Just bring it on and we will love it. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to share my slide. Can you see something? Yeah, wait, this yeah. looks good. This looks wonderful. Okay. So, I'm so sorry for wasting so much time. So, welcome to Malala's house. The photo you see in the background, that's where she was born. There, that's where she spent all her time, her, her early, like her childhood and time. And that's where her first school was. So Malala was born in Pakistan in Mangora, a small uh, village or suburb uh, town on the very far end uh, and near Afghanistan border in Pakistan on July 12, 1997. And that's the school, which is called Fushal Girls High School and College, where she went and, uh, went and this school was ran by her father. He is a teacher and he himself was and still is a very active member of academia and um, especially the social activism. So he used to run all girls high school and it was called Kushal Girls High School and College. The fun fact that I, wa I was like, I should tell this, uh, Malala's brother, the younger brother who was born two years after her, uh, his name is also Khushal. <laughs> so Malala has always had this extraordinary thing. And I think I always say this thing about um, even for myself that in Pakistan, men play a very major role in supporting a woman in her career, in her life. So if two men, your father and your husband, stand by your side, you can conquer the world. No one dared to like stop you from getting education, from exploring, uh, 
like nature and getting into studies and activities. And that's exactly what, uh, how Malala was fortunate. So Malala was born uh, to a, in a house where her father was a outspoken social activist and educator. And Malala Yousaf say herself was excellent student. You, if you see the photograph of a hand, so um, I don't know if uh, everyone of everyone knows about uh, henna tattoos. If anyone knows what henna is, yes, yes, we do. Okay, so I sorry I can't see you in, in front of me. All I can see is a screen, so you guys have to talk to me to make sure that <laughs> to know uh, that I'm I'm hearing you. So Malala. Um, is, is a girl full of energy. She liked to wear uh, pretty flowery shalwar kameez and she always loved uh, bangles and mehndi. But her interest is different. Usually you put a flower or a different pattern on your hand. But she was so obsessed with her uh, and she was so interested in her subjects that she actually uh, did chemistry and <laughs> made um, the structures and draw chemical formulas on her hand with using henna tattoo. That was one of the very fun and cute things. It's also in her book. So Malala started talking actively at the age of 11. So her first address or her it was in the protest at uh, Peshawar Press Club, where she went with her father. Her father took her there and she addressed the audience uh, and call out Taliban out loud publicly that how dare the Taliban take away my basic right of, to education. So remember, and the important point here is that um, Malala was having a good life with her parents in a way that her parents were making sure that all their kids get education. And Malala's father was invested a lot of his time and energy in her, knowing that she has something special, she has the spark. But unfortunately, uh, a series of events happened where the Sawat Valley, or Sawat district, a, a very beautiful uh, tourist spot of Pakistan was, um, came under the command or, uh, and control of Taliban. So at that time, she went to the press club for the first time to register her protest. While I'm talking about what happened, why the time came where she had to go and start speaking for her right to education at the age of 11 was, that in 2001, when the war against terrorism started in Afghanistan, Pakistan was supporting the war and the US military was allowed to use the bases in Pakistan. When the operation went in further, if you see the, uh, the first image, can you see, I don't know if you can see my mouse or cursor. Um, this is the map of Pakistan and a huge side is lined and where we share our border with Afghanistan. And if you see this small scare, that will show that the place, Mangora, is pretty close to the border of Afghanistan. So as a reaction of war against terrorism, uh, seeing the border of Pakistan and Afghanistan, you can see there, uh, there is a leaky border it's so big and there's in Afghanistan has huge mountains that it's kind of become impossible to completely seal it. So as a reaction when uh, the operation went further and, and things got serious, some of the Taliban started like sweeping in to the Pakistan near border wherever they got a chance and over the time uh, Maulana Fazlullah, which is also called Mullah Radio, uh, made his headquarter five kilometers away from a town where Malala's family used to live. 
So at that time, the challenge actually began. That was the time when uh, this uh, Mola, I'm gonna call him uh, Mullah Radio. That means cleric radio. Um, so Mullah Radio, he uh, started illegal FM radio where he used to dictate people his concept of radicalized extreme uh, Islamic practices. And he, I don't know, uh, I, I'll not even, it's, it's, I, it will not be appropriate or right to say that the exact Islamization, but um, you know, like there are, uh, there is a, always a group of people who always go on the other extreme and think whatever what they are doing is right, everyone else is wrong. And when they come in power by hook or by crook, they try to control everyone and try to make everyone live their lives according to what they think is right. So that's something that happened at that time in Sawat Valley. Uh, during especially, um, he was uh, able to make a powerful stronghold by 2007 in this area when he started telling people that music is illegal. It's like it, music is haram. You cannot, barber shops were being attacked because you cannot trim your beard and you cannot have a haircut. And then uh, the music shops were burned, the CDs and the artists of that area, uh, because um, remember like uh, Pakistan has a very rich culture uh, when it comes to poetry, music and uh, theater. It's theater is like, dying over the time now, but it is there. So what happened was that they started targeting these people. Uh, one of the local dancer and singer was murdered and her body was found in the middle of the town on the main road. And then this poet who was writing against Osama bin Laden, he, Afghan poet, he was killed in the same area. And in the same way, eventually he started telling the world that you cannot send girls to school. Education is not good because obviously it will liberate their minds and it will give them a freedom to express themselves. So in February, 2009, uh, Malala Yousafzai made her first television appearance. Remember, it's the same time right now. Um, these extremists are kind of have hijacked that area. The Pakistan military is working to liberate that area. There is an operation going on. And um, Malala at, at that time is being told that she cannot go to school. And when the operation started, the military operation started, actually a lot of people had to evacuate for the safety purposes because if they would have been stayed there, they were at risk of like being a part of a collateral damage by accident. If by a, if some rocket falls on their house by mistake. So this it was basically a war zone and you needed people to be at safe place. So I found this very interesting video of Malala. Uh, this is, remember, this is a little 11 year old girl who got a chance to, I don't know if you can see the, can you see my video a screen? Yes, Sadia. Yeah, we so can see the screen, but we can't. Did you, we, can you guys see uh, our daily motion website right now? No, see, did you click on the... No, you have to share that screen as well. Sadia. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. So, if I go tab, Chrome, share. The yeah. volume is off though, you have to unmute it, I think. I get the... और आप ये समझ लीजिए कि दो साल हम स्कूल सही तरीके से नहीं गए। हेलीकॉप्टर रुक के आवाजें, शेलिंग, लोगों की दिलों में खौफ, कर्फ्यू लगना, बीच में तालिबान ने स्कूल बंद किया, फिर कोल लिए, फिर बंद हुए तो मतलब ये दो साल बिल्कुल जाया हुए। और अभी मैं ये उम्मीद रखती हूँ कि इन्शाल्लाह ऐसा फिर ना हो लेकिन अब भी बच्चों को बहुत ज़रा प्रॉब्लम्स हैं जब वो रास्ते में आते हैं तो रात को टीवी पे कुछ और देखा जाता है कि इतनी इतनी नरमी होगी कर्फ्यू में लेकिन जब सुबह बच्चे आते हैं तो उनको बहुत ज़रा प्रॉब्लम होते हैं रिक्शों पर बैन है वहाँ पे 
तो यानी हमें वहाँ बहुत ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम है आपको बड़े होकर क्या बनना है मुझे पॉलिटिशियन बनना है आपको पॉलिटिशियन बनना है जी अच्छा पॉलिटिशियन बन के क्या करेंगे आप ये मुल्क जो है ये बहुत ज्यादा क्राइसिस से भरा है बहुत ज्यादा क्राइसिस है इसमें तो मैं चाहती हूँ कि ये जो लेजीनेस है ना हमारी गवर्नमेंट्स में लेजी लेजी रहती है कुछ करती नहीं मैं चाहती हूँ कि ये थोड़ी फिट हो I like we have wasted two years of our education because these Taliban they were like trying to control us and they were telling us you guys cannot go to school and then the other day they were like okay you can go to school and then there was a military operation there was curfews so there were times when we had difficulty going to school because the only mode of transportation transportation in that city is rickshaw and that was like banned so and then uh, the host asked what you want to be when you grow up she said I want to be a politician. because you know this country has a very lazy government they they are always like sitting there and not doing their work properly and they're nagging so i need to correct these things so one day i will be a politician to take care of all these matters <laughs> so going back to you guys can stop me wherever if uh, i like if the time is like going super crazy otherwise I, i'm going to go back to the slides Well, how far are you, Sonia? How many more slides do you have? Okay, I think. Can you see the slides? Yes. I, so I'm gonna okay summarize it. I um I actually don't remember how much slides I have. So um, good. Uh, BBC uh, approached uh, Yusuf Zayis, Malala Yusuf Zayis' father, in search of someone who can write a blog for them to to share the experience, how they what they're going through during this Tehreek Taliban Pakistan's uh, rule. And uh, Malala Yusuf Zayis' father, Zayaudin, said, "Okay, my daughter will be willing to contribute to it." So she, I remember um, in my paper, which uh, the research paper I studied about all this process was that. um the person used to call every week on cell phone and malala used to give him the summary of what she been through what was her experience and how her life was in that day and that's how and then he used to like um write it down for him and post it on the uh, the website so that was what she did for some time in a sick and and then in 2009 uh, the new york time um she had and uh, there were two documentaries based on her first was class dismissed was a 30 minute piece about the school shutdown and then the second film came as a school girls odyssey and they both are on their website and they were uh, there and that did bring a lot of light a uh, limelight on malala and that summer when she also met the us special envoy to afghanistan and pakistan uh, mr richard holbrook and asked him to help her uh, effort to uh, protect the education for the girls and based on all her activities uh, and her coverage in both national and international media um, in december 2009 she was considered and was declared as the bbc's youngest blogger and that was a time when her identity actually came up like and all her uh, work came on the surface and based on all her activism in 2011 she was nominated by human activist uh, for the international children's peace prize unfortunately she was not able to win that but uh, based on all her efforts the government of pakistan in december uh, awarded her the pakistan's first national youth peace prize she was the first one to uh, get it from the prime minister of the pakistan mr yusuf raza gilani and later um, the award was actually named after her as national malala peace prize and uh, all the youth under age of 18 uh, are eligible for this award based on their activism and their work and the later uh, here is another video of malala um, when the operation was done um, so she was she was sharing her experience of how she's feeling and and uh, the summary is that uh, she said that um i am much more relaxed today is the first day of the school and i'm so happy to be back and um i'm glad that the pakistan uh, army did a great job uh, of getting rid of all the terrorists and kicking them out 
And then the second question was that, uh, is there any fear or concern you and your class fellows and your friends have as the girls of this area? And she said that, uh, we are worried that the leaders of those extremist groups are still alive and what if they'll build another force and come back to rule us and um but and then uh, she, she being very uh, optimistic said that i'm sure that uh, pakistan army will take care of them and uh, finish them the way they took care of them right now so but unfortunately i think um even if uh, we were able to do the operation there there still, ah! sorry, there still was not enough um, uh, chance, uh, enough uh, security to make sure that, that the guy never attacked her, which he did, the Taliban uh, did. And this is another interview of Malala after receiving her first National Peace Prize, where Malala is talking to the national newspaper and where she's talking about that she uh, thinks that if by sh when she got this award, it's the award for every girl of Pakistan who is studying and standing up for herself. And she also mentioned that um, it's not that uh, uh, that she uh, sorry, and she mentioned that she wants to establish a Malala Educational Fund uh, and trust where she can uh, and, and raise money to make better and bigger schools all around the Pakistan for the education of girls. And, so, and to, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Sadi, we're going to need you to finish because we have, I'm and not I, sure when Marianne needs to do her next thing. So unfortunately in 2012, Malala was attacked and then she, uh, when she was riding back home, and two other girls were shot by her, with, along her. And um, I'm glad that she was rescued and she was airlifted um, by CN2 combined military hospital in Peshawar where she was treated and then she was moved to England. And rest, we know about her success all around the world now. So I'm so sorry for the inconvenience and the trouble and I will say my bye. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm yeah, sorry right. to have to interrupt you, but I know no. Marianne has a, that Mayor has a very busy schedule. And we were, we were put in after a class, so I don't want to keep her way, way too long. So I really enjoyed those comments. I thought she did an excellent job. And I had no idea she was that famous, none. Mm -hmm. So do we have any questions or comments for Sadia? On YouTube, there's a comment from Jen uh, who says, I love Malala. Thank you for this information. You're welcome. We love Malala too. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people love Malala. Love her courage and her commitment to education. I just wanted to say one thing and I'm going to, I wanted to say thank you to all those Pakistani men who as a role of father, brother, or son have supported the education of their daughters and their sisters, like just like Malala. And at the biggest pillar behind her was her father who took her everywhere, who supported her and who let her speak openly, even if that may, meant to take a risk. So I hope all the Pakistani men who are supporting education of women in, the, in their family succeed. Yeah, I think that we don't know that. I sure didn't uh, know that. I didn't. So uh, that's very valuable right there. Just that one piece of information. You did, you did a wonderful job. And you showed us stuff we haven't seen before. And I'm sorry that I had to clip you a little bit. But it I'm is so getting sorry. lighter. And the students will, wanting, will be wanting to go too. So... It's hard to hold the students because they have jobs and commitments yeah. too. So, but you did a wonderful job. Are there any other yeah. comments for her before we give some loot away? A thumbs up as well from you too. Yeah, thumbs up is right. Very, very good presentation. Wonderful yeah. information. It's the kind of thing that we should do more often is find out what's going on in other countries. Arjun has spoken to us about Hungary. Um, 
Moji Zola has told us about things going on in Africa, particularly in Nigeria. We've been blessed sometimes. And Symmetra's told us a bit about India, so we're lucky. 